Hey guys, Mike here with StoneCoatCountertops.com. Today we're going to show you how we made this piece of Stone Coat Countertop. We teamed up with YouTube channel C Jane Drill. We had a great time. All the tips and tricks of how we made this piece are going to be available right now. We're going to teach you everything that we did, all the techniques. We had such a good time and you will not believe how easy this is to do yourself in your own space over your old existing countertops. Stay tuned and visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Enjoy the video. I'm here with Leah from C. Jane Drill. Thank you so much for coming down to Southern Oregon to see how this product works in person. Uh, we have done a really amazing project together. Stay tuned. This is going to blow your mind. And Leah, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Mike, for having me. See how it starts to clear up when the two parts mix again, too. That's, that's how you can tell it's mixing well. You're already a journeyman, Leah. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit more paint on your palette here. See, because that spray paint sitting on the surface, different, okay? So I'm going to hit it again with some spray paint, and I'm going to just hit that with the alcohol. And let it... It doesn't take much, is it? No. It doesn't really take too much. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And that, that will create a really cool portion of this. And, and right through this section, we're just creating random areas now that have visual interest. So let's, let's just put some pearl right through here and see what happens. And we'll just spread it right out, right on the center here. Now remember how I said we could use every last drop? I'm going to have you take and just scrape that bucket out right into that big mass. Awesome. You can see a lot of it retains in the bucket, you know, and we want to get that out. Now, it's important if you do this, you need to mix it exactly how we show. You need to use this notch trowel and a brush because, and that's plenty, Leah, that's good. Uh, you need to use, yeah, uh, spread this out how we do because you don't want to use, um, and I'll give you a paper towel. What I like to do in between processes when you get yucky, you can just, I keep a paper towel right near me and this keeps our gloves kind of sticky free so we can keep using the tools and not make a big mess. Um, so now we're going to spread this out. So we're going to use our notch trowel and you see how it's a little bit different where you scraped it out of the bucket see the little squiggly lines so that's what we really need to mix up too and that will that will make sure that that product is mixed with everything else and it won't have a sticky spot uh, that's one of the one of the things with doing epoxy is you can get sticky spots if you're not careful when you mix it so if you do it this way you won't get those sticky spots all right so i'm just going to start to trowel this out and when i do that i don't push it all the way to the edge yet i'm going to get everything close and I'm gonna do this half and you're gonna do that half okay I'm gonna get everything close and then I'll do the edges so I'm just using this trowel you see how I'm just pushing a little bead right over this edge that's important we don't want to get too much over the edge but that's gonna to start to run over the edges and give us enough material when we are uh, when we're getting close to the end here it'll get everything mixed properly all right, I'm going to go around front and do the other half, and then you'll start your fun there. So I just work that mass of epoxy out to the edge. Get it right over this edge here, too. And then I'm just going to... Okay, and I'll leave that. We have a little bit little bit of extra epoxy and that's okay we're gonna put that back in our bucket so we won't push it over the edge go ahead and mix it around your piece and then what's left over we'll save it and we'll do different color effects with it so there's your okay. trowel go ahead and, and do your half yeah yeah exactly and this is Leah's first time ever doing this product right yes, 
Yes, it is. All right, we're going to have fun. We have a lot of people that come out to our hands-on trainings and they've never used the product before and it's, it's amazing what they're able to come up with their very first time. You said there was going to be excess and then we we're just going to have to remove it from... Yeah, so, so don't push all that excess over the edge. I like to have a little bit extra when I'm doing a project so that I could do different color effects if I want to with it. And, and so I'll show you how we use that. But I'll push, I'll get it back in the bucket for us and show you how we do that. Sweet. I'll show you what I do now is what we call mowing the lawn. I'll take the entire piece and I'll use this ex extra and I'll just go through and I'll do long strokes through the whole project and I put my trowel kind of at an angle so that it all goes that way, okay? And that's just making sure that I got the entire thing gauged about the same depth. And it's not super critical, but this is what we like to do. And you can see we've pushed that entire excess out front there. So I'm gonna go over there with our bucket and scoop it right into my bucket. So I brought all my epoxy over here to a corner and now I'm going to take it and scoop it right off into this bucket. You don't want to go too fast because you'll miss your bucket. But I'm just babying it right back in there and now I'm not wasting this epoxy. I could do another side sample or I could use this in a, in a river or a big vein that we're doing to create a really cool custom look. And so we're going to show you how to do that but that's how you save your extra epoxy and not waste it. Let's go ahead and put that back over the table. Be careful, Leah, I got it on the floor. We're already making a mess. Okay. <laughs> you wanna really prep your area so that you don't make um, a mess in your workspace. You wanna prep it. Uh, we have RAM board down, we, we've protected our area, we've covered our tables, and all that prep work just really helps them clean up. All right, now we're going to use our brush. I'm gonna give you a brush. And I'm going to take a brush, there you go, and we're going to chop this out. So you can see, um, see some of the trowel marks like right here and things like that. We're going to actually prime our brush. So if you dip your brush in there a little bit. And then what I do when I chop this out is I'll use the heel of my brush and I'll start there and I'll just start to chop it like this and I'll just go random and I'm chopping out the entire piece. This not only um, eliminates our trowel marks, but it's going to help mix the material one final time. So just randomly, we're gonna chop the whole thing out all the way to the edges, and then we're gonna paint those edges to get it, uh, our product uh, all around the edges as well. And the key with this is to be random um, and not to do rows, perfect rows. You just wanna be random so that it appears uh, random like natural stone is. Are you having fun yet, Leah? I'm digging it. All right, <laughs> right on. And I have these little paint pyramids that everything's lifted on. You want to make sure that um, whatever you have underneath your piece to hold it up off the deck, it's not going to stick on the edges because those, those edges will glue to uh, whatever, whatever's okay. underneath it. And then after we get it chopped out, you can just take that brush and just brush these edges horizontally with the piece and really work that epoxy into the edges. And if you need more material, we got our extra material here in the bucket that you could paint your edges with. It's important, we're gonna do a lot of color effects in this piece and show a, a few different techniques, but it's important to keep the edges horizontal um, because if, if I brush down with my brush it'll push the epoxy off the edges so that's why we go horizontal. I'll come around I'll do the front half and then you can do your back piece there on the side Leah is that okay? okay. And when you're done using that trowel you want to stick it teeth side facing up so that all that epoxy runs away from the trowel and you could reuse it over and over again. All right, you got it chopped out. Now, what do you see all over the surface? Bubbles. Bubbles, right? And so we're going to show how we pop those bubbles. 
We get asked all the time. Can I just set this down right yeah, down? set it anywhere you want. Okay, okay so we're going to torch the bubbles out, and the torch will, um, will get rid of the bubbles for us very easily. Right, so I'm going to torch this half, and you'll see all these bubbles disappear. Let's do it. So when I do this, I just sweep right across the surface, and those will start to disappear for me. So it doesn't happen immediately, but you can see it all starts I can, to... I can see it. I can see With that. that. And the trick is um, propane, you don't want to use MAP gas. Yeah, MAP gas is a little too hot. Uh, propane works really good, we found. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. Just okay. Because, uh, <laughs> so you can see it'll pop them, but then it takes just a minute for that dimple to fill in. And when we're doing this step here, it's not important to get everything perfect. We're just popping the initial bubbles. We're going to get a few more divots and dimples and all kinds of imperfections that we address at the very end of the project. But this is just now setting our canvas where we're ready to really start having a good time. And this is self-leveling, so it's going to continue to lay out like a sheet of glass for us. Karen, Karen, get, get level if you can. Now that is amazing. And what I like about doing um, a base color that's a little bit contrasting to what we're doing is you start to see through some of that just like natural stone isn't the same monotone color all the way through. All right, so to get this look that we're going for today, less is more. So we don't want to add too much, um, too much spray paint. We'll start with a little and we'll work out from there. So I'm going to use my trowel as my palette board, right? And we're going to take our brush that we've, we don't have to clean that brush off. We're just going to keep, keep it uh, yucky. We're going to grab a little bit of that spray paint, not a lot. And when I start, I'm going to start in one spot and we'll start to fade this out. We don't want to do uh, the same color all the way through. We're going to do dark areas that fade out to light areas. So I'll just start chopping. You can see it adds a little bit of black and we'll just take that and I just randomly start going out from that. And when, when my brush starts to die with color, I come back to that heavy color and just keep working it out. And this is where a little bit of practice comes in. You could do a practice board or a sample board, but this really is the fun part. This is where you start to see, oh my goodness, it's, it's already starting to look like stone. It already starts to meld. And because we're using black into white, it changes it into gray tones because it's mixing with that white. That's why we add the base tint for the marble look. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this half. You're doing that half, Leah. Okay, All right, right, here we go. So you can see I start kind of heavy right there and, and just random is all you're looking for. And then I'll, I'll do like some heavy spots and then I'll come back and chop everything in between because I don't like to leave voids. They look fake. And so I'll come here and that actually adds just touches of color between those effects. And it'll really start to look like natural marble when you do that. And the, the whole key here is not to try to do something too perfect. You don't, you don't, want, you don't want it to look man-made, so just have fun with it. Don't be, don't be too perfect on it. And just really let your, let your imagination fly. And if you don't like something, it's never, it's, it's always a happy accident. You could always change it, right? You can always just keep chopping it or erase it, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm almost done with this half. Let me Put a little bit more color right here so we don't have all of our spots at the same spot. I'll just keep. You can see I'm using that heel of the brush. I'm not chopping straight down. I'm just kind of going random here. Okay. Spread those out a little bit more. I like some heavy spots. I don't want to, I don't want to erase all those heavy spots. And now it's your turn, Leah. Okay. And it's just a little bit. Yeah, and you could always add more. You can't, you can't take it out, right? You could always add more, but that's my philosophy. And if you need more paint, I can add, I can add more to that. And I like to, yep, I like to use the heel. There you go. And that's, that's how I seem to get a, a really good look. You're doing good. Just keep it up. Just go crazy with it. <laughs> I 
And I like just starting random areas away from each other and then, and then, and then come back into those areas you've already done and then it, 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 it fades the color in and out for you. <laughs> You're, so, so can I give you a tip here? Please. All right, let me grab your brush. So we're going to start. I'm going to use the heel of that brush to get my color on. Yeah. And I'm going to start with the heel. I'm going to hit it down. And then I'm just going to work from that area and just go random. And le kind of leave that blotch and then just pull from it in different areas. And that's how I get that real, real... Um, natural look okay. and uh, you're, you're kind of using the, this part and if you use the heel for some yeah, reason it works really I, good I think I got it yeah I I right got on it. there you go perfect it's all right yep see how you're erasing some of the man-madeness that's what you're looking to do yes good job you're already a journeyman Leah <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little bit more paint on your palette here and when I spray it, I don't spray it right over my piece because I'll get overspray everywhere. So I'll just put a little bit right there for you, and now you're ready to rock. Way too much. That's all right. Yeah, see, that's okay. You'll have a dark spot there, and it'll fade out light. That's okay. You want darks and lights. You want it random so it doesn't all look the same. Can you see how the working time is important? You don't want to be rushed, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that. Yeah. But, but how much time do we have here? You, you have, you have uh, 45 minutes to over an hour. Okay. Um, um, and, and it doesn't, now we have a bristle brush in there. That's what I just pulled out. A lot of times I'll have a little pin nail sitting aside or a pair of tweezers. You can get out any loose bristles. You don't want to leave those in there. I'm going to work this section a little bit, Leah. Is that okay? Oh, I don't know where the other brush went. That's all right. Oh, yeah, I got your brush, don't I? No, uh, let me, yeah, let me grab, yeah, I'll just grab yours, and you could keep going, and I'll do a little bit of this section here. And when you're ready for more black, let me know. When it starts getting towards the end, I'll put the camera back on. You want more black? Yeah, I think yeah, I want to really fun. <laughs> it, is, it is fun. <laughs> okay, Leah, what we're doing now is, is I call this man-made. Some of these you can see that it was done with a brush, uh, done by chopping in. And so I'm going to take the torch, and, and you can see our bubbles are back, and that's okay. That's normal. We're just going to start moving the color. It's important not to over torch here. I, I call it touch and go. We're going to go in, move the color, and watch it move. Let's go ahead and torch this and make it look very natural. See how it moves that color for me? See what it's doing to that where it'll just really start to move things around and it'll erase some of those. So if I have a, a brush mark, let's say, let's say this was bothering me, you know, right here. I could just fade that out a little bit where it looks more natural. So this is almost acting like a paintbrush for me. Okay, so right here, if, if, if brush marks are bothering you, if there's something that looks unnatural, this is where the torch comes in, is I can actually get in there and manipulate it and move that. So that's what I'm doing here with this, this section. I just can move this black and it really starts to make it look like natural marble. It's, this is the magic. This is, that's why that brush chopping it in it isn't that important because our torch will come in here and make it look very natural and some some of the color it won't move too much because you don't have a lot of color in there um, so you don't want to over torch it and like I'm just pushing my finger in the piece here where that void was and that will that's another way so if this was too heavy for me I could get in here and just move that a little bit with my finger and then torch it it'll start to soften it up so you want to go ahead and, and, and get do. yours going. Yeah, that's totally cool. And you can see it doesn't ignite, right? It's not. Uh, oh, it, it, I got it. 
Oh, uh, that um, if you hold both, that will lock it in for you. There you go. So you got to get a little bit closer to the black, and then it'll start to. There you go. See how it's starting to move for you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, see how you're erasing those brush marks? That's all right, yeah. That is totally cool. And the, the key is just not to leave your torch in the same place too long. You could always come back to it. You just don't want to burn the epoxy. No, you're doing great. Now, Leah, you've been in the trades your whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say this mimics some marble that you've seen? Absolutely. Isn't that easy to do? It's easy to do, and um, I gotta tell you, I'm just amazed. I'm just totally amazed. <laughs> you, you know, this is a spot a lot of folks can stop, and this would be their project. They'd be uh -huh. very happy with it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go beyond this and show more effects, but this is uh, this is definitely somewhere people can stop. My God, I just gotta ask you. So when you came up with this idea, how did it just hit you? Wait a second, I think if I did this, it will look this way. How did it come to you? Very good question. A lot of it is just trial and error and, and not being afraid to try new things. And so get in there and really try different things. And a lot of them turn out as failures, right? But that's why we have our website to show people, hey, here's a bunch of stuff you can do, but we don't want to limit somebody's imagination. And so we always have sample boards, small samples that we could play with and see if we like that look. All right, let's, uh, let's do our next effect. And what I like to do is I like to add traces of color. Uh, we've heard of Calcutta uh, gold marble, and, and we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add a little bit, actually we're gonna grab this one. We're gonna add a little bit of brass metallic. And what that's gonna do is just give us traces of color. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. This is where I use my real expensive tool, my paint stick, right? You can do this with any color you like, but we really like this tone for this look. So I'm gonna just spray some of that on my paint stick, and I'm just gonna start dragging this through in just some areas. And you can see it's just gonna be, gonna be really, not, really random. And you don't want to do like, I don't like to do S's or real man-made shapes. I like to just kind of go random. So we're just going to wipe some of that color. See, I really, it's not critical how it looks at this point. Our torch is going to make it look, uh, you just want to spread these out. Keep them kind of thin. See how it's heavy right there? I'll just take my stick and just spread that out a little bit. I want you to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit on there for you. Just go ahead and put it in there randomly, wherever you'd like. Nice. Very good. That, that's about it, that's right? cool. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm going to actually take, take this stick. I'm going to wipe off the excess. And I want you to get in there and just start moving those around. Kind of create, make it look like this. Make it look really kind of thinned out a little bit. Just, there you go. Just, just, just scrape it around. Perfect. Perfect. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's panic mode at this point. Oh no, I'm ruining it. Don't worry, you're not. We're gonna, have, we're gonna make it look really cool. Man, that, that, I, this is just incredible. <laughs> All right, what I'm gonna do now, Leah, is so I'm gonna take the torch and start to make these look okay. natural now, okay? So it's important not to overdo the torching because you'll burn the epoxy at this okay. point, but we're just going to really get in there, see how it thins that out and makes it look like deposits. I can even take my finger and just elongate some of this, right? No, I noticed in some of the videos you, you alcohol to fracture it. We're going to do that too. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do that too. So let me do this one. So see how it's not moving how the others are because it's just kind of in a blob? Yeah. Finger painting. Just move that around a little bit. Now watch. See how that starts to look like a natural deposit? You can stretch that out. You can, you can create tails on it just by using your finger right through it.
And this just gives it traces of color. It makes the piece more visually interesting. So I like to do a lot of the work with my finger first just to, just to get it spread out and then I'll torch it to really, really smooth everything out. So I'm just getting in here with the torch and my finger right now. You could use a paint stick, you could use whatever you want just to get these and I like that the white still mixes with everything. You want to go ahead and do yours there? Oh, they're, they're looking cool. You're spreading them really good. I can't overdo it because you say... Uh... So you can... They're looking awesome already. And so you can see a little bit of the chunks of stuff. That's just because I didn't shake the can quite well enough. So that's important to remember, but that's okay. That'll look, that'll look good anyways. So you want to use your finger in this one a little bit and just, just move that around so you can't see this. There you go. Now torch it. Actually, we'll put a little bit more epoxy. I'll, I'll use some of this right here. And I'll just add a little bit more epoxy right there, and now it'll flow out for you. Very cool. See how that works? You, you can add some of that white in areas too. Let's do that. You can. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to use this white that we've kept in the bucket, uh -huh. and we're just going to put a few like fracture lines cool. going across that. And what I like to do is start from one, one side. I don't stop in the middle. I go all the way across. See that? Go ahead and do that a couple spots on yours, and, and the, yeah, I'll grab that torch from you. You probably should have been more straight. That's okay. Got... It's all happy accidents. It's, it all works. Don't worry. You're doing great. One more. Yeah, do it. Very cool. Now, what, what I do with these is I just torch them out a little bit. And that will, that will start to flow these little lines so that when you look at the finished piece, it'll look like, like fractured lines through it. And then I'll take, we could take your paint stick where it's just a little squiggly and you could just kind of spread that out just a little bit. You want to do it, do it through that just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Yeah, cool. Very cool. And I actually like this. Watch this. So Leah, again, right here, we could stop. This could be your finished piece. We could have stopped just with one accent. You, this is just whatever you want to build. It's, it's up to you. But what we're going to do now is, is I like to go wild sometimes. So we're going to do a big vein right down the center of this and pretend it's our accent island, a, a showpiece of our home. And so we're going to do a nice big vein right through, right through the center. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the vein with some of this extra epoxy that we had. Okay. And this is going to be where we put the vein. And I don't like to go directly down the center. We'll just go from corner to corner and it doesn't, it's not super critical. So I'm going to bring my vein right there. That's a good spot right there. I like it. So now I'm going to take some of our colors and I'm going to start to build this vein. I'm going to use black and we'll just start dragging colors right through that. And it's important to remember not to go too big at first because you can always grow it. You can't shrink it. Okay, so I'm just going to take, start dragging color right through that vein. Okay, I'm going to do my next color and I'm just going to use these four colors I have. That was black. This is brass. I'm going to start, and I like to mix colors because it looks very natural as you keep going. Isn't that cool what it's already doing? I, I like the fact that each piece is unique, just like stone. Yeah, you know? right. It, it is. It's, it, nothing, nothing is ever the same. You can't make it the same even if you wanted to. That's the beauty of it. But you can use the same recipe and make it match in a kitchen. See what it's already doing, uh -huh. how it reacts. All right, let's use. At the end of the day, folks can say, I need this. I need this. Yeah. Not, not Mother Nature, I need this. 
tried. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> but it looks like Mother Nature, boy, I'll tell you. I'm adding chrome right now, chrome spray paint. And this is really a cool effect you can do in it. That's correct. Yeah, we, we love that. No, nobody's going to have the same one. So now I'm going back to that black. See how it really defines that vein? Now I'm going to, now I'm going to torch this out, Leah. And this is, this is really incredible. So I don't like my veins just nice, long, straight. I like them random like it would be a natural stone. <laughs> so I'm going to just start to see what that does with your vein. See how easy this really is? All the reactions are done for you. you it's, not, it's not my artistic ability. I'm just moving it with the torch. Chrome. Oh, man. Yeah, and the reason I like that chrome is it sits on top of the surface. Some of them dive in, some of them sit on top. See how the white and the bronze and everything just mixes together, right? So you saw how I did that vein, um, and, and, and I, I really like, I, I like just the one vein down it. Do you, do you think it looks pretty good like that? I think it looks pretty good. All right. Like you didn't push it or anything. Oh, okay. Let's torch it. So let's say I wanted to move this vein further out. So that's yeah. something you can do. You just kind of get in there. See how you can move it where you want it to be, where it's not all the same size. That looks more natural, where it's not just the same size all the way down. It's not perfectly straight. You're not going for perfect. You're, you're just going for random. And I do love how these do that effect for you, right? Again, Leah, we could stop right here. This could be a real showpiece. This could be something somebody, you know, people come in and they go, are you kidding me? You made this. And, and they're not going to believe it, right? But I'm going to just show you a couple more effects that take it from just amazing to how would you do that, right? So we're going to do that right now. What do you think so far, Leah? <laughs> I love it, man. I am so glad we came down here. That's this cool. It's fantastic. I'm sure you hear this all the so, time, right? I mean, like, <laughs> we, you don't get tired of it. No, I mean, we, I, I love it when people see it in real life because you can't, you can't see, you can't see the real, like, oh my gosh, it's really that easy unless you're here to see it you now. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's easy and it looks fantastic. Yeah, I mean, people can really get those results. Okay, Leah, what I'm going to do now is this is where I'll, I'll step back, I'll evaluate my piece. Sometimes I don't know when to quit, right? Um, I'm looking at this where I put this little striation through. I don't personally like it, so I'm just going to erase it. Just erase it, and then I'm going to torch that out again so it looks more natural to me. All right, so I erased that. I'm, I'm happy with that. That looks good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, take our deep silver. This is our metallic powder you can get right on our website. We have a bunch of different colors and you mix it with isopropyl alcohol. Okay. okay? You shake that up. You want to make sure it, sh it shook really well. And I'm just going to add... Alcohol. All right. So we use the 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's eight ounces of alcohol to half a bag of our metallic. That's what's in this bottle. Really easy to... You can find that alcohol at... Walgreens or Walmart or wherever. So I'm going to take a little bit of that spray paint and I'm just going to create a couple of accent areas that fracture. It's going to, it's going to really look um, 
visually interesting. And I'll show you how easy this is. Wait, wait, let me just ask you this way. Do you have to shake it up to this, uh, you know, the yes. incorporate the... Yes, you do. The, these will separate. And, and this doesn't go bad sitting in the bottle. This has okay. been in here a long time. So I'll shake that up really good. Make sure that's mixed. Now we're ready to rock. Okay. okay? And I'm going to spray a little bit of this. Let's just go random right here. You can see I don't go too heavy. And I'm just going to immediately hit it with that alcohol. And watch what, watch what it does to that. It'll start to separate and granify, we call it. It starts to give it these really, really, um, really, really cool cool patterns. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do this section like this this piece of the rock is different, okay? So I'm going to hit it again with some spray paint and I'm going to just hit that with the alcohol. And let it It doesn't take much, is it? No. It doesn't really take too much. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And that that will create a really cool portion of this. And 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 I will actually go through and just do a couple of areas on this. And then um, just step back and evaluate it. So, would you like to try uh, Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You know what I will say is, it's like you said, less is more. Right. Exactly. So I'm sure people overdo it. It's you, you don't want to, right? Right. So I just want to. Oh, that was too much. No, no, what fade. Are you do? Fade it out a little bit. Oh my God. Would you like me to show you? Yeah. Oh so. My you don't want to use too much. But That's all right. See? That big Hit it. Watch what happens. Oh It'll be okay. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Now watch what happens there. We'll be okay. Oh my no, God. we could always, we could always, we could always fix it. It's all happy accidents, and that might be your favorite part when we're all done. Don't worry. <laughs> you being gracious. No, no, it's all good. Okay, Leah, you see, you see these dimples? Mm -hmm. We get a lot of questions about those dimples. Why is it dimpling? That's just because the alcohol is having reactions with the surface, and that's what creates this. And we'll go back, we'll let this kind of move for a little bit and, and meld and things like that, and then we'll come back and touch those and break surface tension. But that's also why we do the second coat. It's because it will start to hide all that. And this is going to come out really cool. Watch, okay. you'll see. Okay. I'm going to make you a believer. <laughs> I'm going to grab one of my favorite effects to do is to put in this alcohol mixture where it's very subtle so, you, so it catches light at different angles. So I'm going to grab some pearl metallic and we'll spray a section with pearl. I'll show you what that does. Okay, so I got pearl metallic mixed with our alcohol and I'm just going to do a little bit of section there and just show kind of how that iridescent look will we'll let that fade out and then you're going to see how this will just kind of sit on the surface and and it won't be so prominent but see what it did a little bit to our yep, I can see yep. It. and that really creates and I, and I don't do it over the whole surface you just do random areas and let's let's just put some pearl right through here and see what happens and and don't judge it right in the beginning because this it will meld it will flow and it will really do the work for you where it starts to look very natural and very very cool. All right. Hmm. Leah, will you take some of this silver and just hit a little bit of silver right here? I'm scared now. Don't be scared. Big saucer, no, right? I love it. Look at what it's doing. It's, it's, it's going to be cool. Just yeah, just right, right here. Is that a little bit more. Yes, perfect. Perfect. We'll leave that. I'm going to hit a little bit more silver. Let's do silver right here. There we go. And I, I like to leave my vein alone, which was what we've done, but now we've just brought color in. And so we've overlapped color. And, and then even, even these things, what we've done underneath, see how you can see through and it creates that three dimensional look. You know, it looks very natural that way. You know, I noticed that we have like drips, uh, like little bumps here. How do you eliminate those? Do you just. Uh you sand it off once it, the epoxy sets? Great question. We actually use our trowel with this lip and we'll come back after about oh. four hours when it's still gel and we'll scrape those off. Or you can let it dry and sand them off. But if you're doing it in place, you don't want to sand in place in the house. Okay. So you come back in about four hours and scrape those off. Okay. Good question. Wow, that's pretty. Don't you like the iridescence like of that pearl? Yeah. Let's add a little bit more of that. Would you like to spray some more of that pearl somewhere? 
It can I go over? Yeah, totally. Try it out. Go a little bit more. Go right, go right through here. Yes, cool. I'm gonna hit this section right here. Look at how, see now that's mixing with that silver and black. Now, remember what I said, you can kind of let those drips and you see our dimples and stuff like that. You could leave that, but we're gonna make those look more natural. See how they're all circly? Yeah. I'll just kind of touch them with my finger and it will start to, start to make those look a little bit more natural. See what I'm doing? Why don't you just start tapping those and you can, you can uh, erase the ones that you don't like. And leave a few of them, but you don't want the whole thing just circles. Nice, nice. Now I'll torch that out to make that look natural again. Now see, because that spray paint's sitting on the surface, we can move it. Really move it around and make it do whatever we want. Isn't that cool? Now I'm going to go through here and just, just start to look in my piece. Okay, I don't like a lot of these big dots right here. So I'm just going to start doing the same thing on my section here. Just start tapping it out. You see how that alcohol and the spray paint fracture make it look, make it look pretty, pretty uh, natural? And again, if you, have, if you have divots in this first coat, it doesn't matter. You're doing a clear coat over this. And that's that's a, uh, another reason we do a clear coat is it's just it's our insurance to get a really flat piece because this one we like to play with it and move it around and, and do all kinds of effects. And so we don't care if it lays perfectly flat. We'll come back tomorrow and do another coat and make it, make it really okay. flat. So you want to you wanna wait how many hours before you put the... Coat on. Between 15 and 24 hours. Okay. Because uh, th this will be dry in, t in 24 hours uh, to the touch, no problem. And uh, you can do your, do your next coat without sanding as long as it's before 24 hours. If it's after 24 hours, you just sand with 220, wipe the dust with a regular rag, and you're ready for your next coat. Okay, and when you put your top coat on, that's it. That's it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, now let's say you hated this okay. and you couldn't live with it. You can do another color coat right over the top of this and, and then do a clear over that. Okay. So it, you're not limited to just the two coats, but we don't want you getting more epoxy than necessary. So Leah, I, I want to add just a touch of actual, I'm going to do bronze metallic just to give it a little bit more color. And I'm going to overlap these areas that we've already kind of granified. So I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to hit a little bit of bronze right there. See, and then I'll let that move and see what I think. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit right here, too. Let's just do that. And then I'm going to torch so, that out. Can you do a little more bronze, like, when I'm, like, I couldn't see it? Totally. I didn't get it on my close-up. But I kind of want to see the bronze go down. Yes. So show me where you're going to do it. I'll do I'll it. Um, I'll do some right here. Okay. So I'm going to add a touch of bronze right here just to give it a little bit more color right there and then I'm going to torch this out. Now we've really layered some color here. So let's torch this out and really move that around. See what it does when you torch it. Now you've got a lot of color right there and it starts to look like exotic stone where it all melds and matches. The more that you torch it, the more those will move together too. So if I, if I get in here, I could really open these up. See how that works? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just torch out the whole piece. I actually don't like how dark that is. Let me, uh, let me add a little bit of pearl over that. Let's see. That'll lighten it up just a hair. Cool. I like that better. We'll oh. <laughs> that's what happens when you hit it right after you've sprayed alcohol, and, and that's, you know, you just be careful, it just but it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, uh, doesn't go crazy. Very cool. I like it. 
I want to fade this color out just a little bit more this way. So I'm going to add a touch more bronze and see, I want it to finish off this piece right there. And then I'm going to add some of that pearl over the top. And then I'm going to, I'll let that sit a minute and then we'll torch it so we don't catch flame. So I'm just going to bring this edge over. Just help that along. Break that surface tension and then we'll torch it out. And then we'll all match. See how you bring that color right down the edge there. And that's what we're looking to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to torch this three times just to really get all the air bubbles and stuff out. You're going to have some divots and dips and dimples in this first coat. That's totally normal. That's going to come out when you do the second clear coat. All you're going to do is add clear epoxy and that's going to make this thing lay out like a sheet of glass. We had so much fun creating this piece. We just did layer upon layer to make something that looked very unique and very natural. If you want to follow the same process, you can match pieces over and over again. So I'm going to torch this out, and then when you do your clear coat, you'll follow that same procedure with mixing, troweling, chopping, and finally torching. You can see our videos anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. And remember until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon. Hi everybody, I'm Leah C.J. Trail. Now today, well, we're not in Seattle, we're in Southern Oregon, and we're at the Stone Coat Countertops headquarters, and we're talking with Mike here. He's the creator of a very unique product that you're gonna love, because I fell in love with it, and I just had to share it with you. Mike, tell me something about this unique product. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, as we know, and, and we had a need to be able to create countertops on top of your old surfaces. If you're wanting a project that you're building a new surface for, this is very versatile. As you can see, there's a lot of different looks that you can do, and we, we love that do-it-yourself customers and do-it-yourselfers can do this with ease, just like you're going to learn today. Okay, okay. Now, I noticed that this is the, the demo that we're going to be working on. Right, okay. right. And this surface you said was um, primed, it sat overnight, but it's MDF board. Yeah, we use MDF for a couple reasons. You can basically use anything you want as long as it's prepped correctly. But when you use MDF, you need to uh, be sure to use a couple uh, coats of paint and primer in one. The reason we use paint and primer in one is because it, it, it knocks out both steps for you, but as we know, MDF on the edges is quite porous. And so when we router these edges, we have a one quarter inch round over all the way around the perimeter. But when you router these, it's kind of rough. And so we sand that uh, just like we show in some of our other videos. And we do two coats of paint and primer in one. And then we're going to sand right before we apply our epoxy. Okay, let me, let me ask you this because this was, it's kind of a concern. And I'm thinking maybe other people are thinking the same thing. A lot of these countertops are going to be used in kitchens or in bathrooms where there's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And if MDF comes in contact with water, then you have to worry about the swelling of right. the product, right? Why not just use plywood? Uh, we, you can use plywood. Okay. When we do use MDF in undermount sink areas or dishwashers where you get that steam transfer, okay. we use a product called RedGuard, which is a waterproof membrane. You could find that at Home Depot as well. And that uh, waterproofs the underside of the MDF, where okay. we do this uh, for shower panels. And when we use that system, it works really well. And we don't have that swelling of the MDF. Plywood, when you do use plywood, you're going to have a little bit of voids on the front edges or on your edges where that ply is missing unless you get a real high-end plywood. So if you do use regular plywood that has some voids, you just pre-fill that with Bondo or an automotive putty. I saw you use a Bondo in mm -hmm. a couple of the videos, and I was wondering about that. So, but do you prefer to use the MDF? We like MDF because it's very flat and some of the plywood will bow. And if you have like a, a, a dip or a crown in plywood and you do a really cool vein, but it's a high point, because it's liquid and self-leveling epoxy, it'll want to run and kind of move your vein. So we like to use something obviously that's really level, uh, both directions and really flat. Uh, now, now, we do have a lot of folks that do this over plywood, and it comes out great, but just get a piece of plywood that's nice and flat. Okay, I, I saw the, the uh, level, and I was wondering why, why we had a level on the countertop. Now I know. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I got that. Um, 
Well, why don't you take us through the process? I do want to say this. What I love about the product is it looks just like real, solid uh, countertop surface. You wouldn't know if you didn't know. Okay? Thank you. And, and, and that's the beauty of the product because anybody that's thinking about remodeling a kitchen or remodeling a bathroom, if you check out the prices of granite or quartz, you know it's really pricey. Right. It's really, really pricey. Now, you were in that business, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did just about every countertop you could imagine, but our main focus was granite countertops. And we saw the price tag of those. We saw what customers had to go through. And a lot of people couldn't get the exotic looks or the custom looks that they were going for just because of the price point. Let, let me ask you about the price point. Um, since you were a fabricator, you know the cost. For, for an average kitchen like a 10 by 10, mm -hmm. okay, um, what could the average homeowner expect to spend I guess granite and quartz are pretty close in terms of price. Sure, right, right. right. What, they, what, what could they expect to spend on the selection, the fabrication, and then of course the installation because people don't do that themselves. Right, you know, depending on where you're at in the country, that's gonna vary, but here locally in our market, it, it bare minimum at the standard low-end colors are gonna be about $65 a square foot for stone. Okay. Uh, that's fabricated installed. Is, what, what is that, is that linear? Or that's square foot, yeah, that's per 60, square foot. $65 yep. for, okay. And this product, for you to do it yourself, it's about five bucks a square foot. You sure can't beat that. Right? Yeah, that, right? <laughs> that's a big, huge difference. So you get the look, you get the look of a natural stone, and um, so there, but there are other benefits. Can you tell folks what makes this product so special? Because it's not just the look right. when it comes to heat and, and, and moisture yeah. like that being resistant. You know, we get asked that all the time. And, and why is your stuff different? And I'll tell you, just like you said, you can put hot pans directly on the surface. Another thing is, let's say in a few years, you're sick of your color and you want a whole design change. You can redo this over and over to get it whatever look you want, and it doesn't break the bank. Also, you have the working time with our materials. A lot of uh, two-part products like this, number one, they're noxious. This is zero VOC. When you work with it today, you're going to notice there's not this huge, horrible smell. There's zero VOC. It's food grade. You can use it in commercial kitchen application for food contact. It also has the working time to get some of these looks, take some artistic fun. You got to have a good time, but you, you don't want to be rushed during that process. So this gives you the time to do that. And also it is do it yourself friendly because it's such an easy product to work with. Okay. And that's one of the downsides of natural stone because it isn't do it yourself. No, you got one chance to cut that material, and if you cut it and it's wrong, you, you own it, and you, now you, can, you gotta find a new home for it. You got a big, <laughs> expensive mistake. Yeah, right? you sure and do. Just installing it, 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 it takes a lot of muscle to inst it takes several people. Sure, right, absolutely, up. yeah. Okay, so, um, well, why don't, we, why don't we start the process? Sounds I, great. I, I wanna get started, I'm excited. I'm excited to get started. Sounds great. So one thing to keep in mind when doing this product is we've got latex paint down on the surface. This is just paint and primer in one uh, that you can get from Home Depot, right? Okay. So, so this is what's down here. With This color is called natural gray. When we're, when we're using this, all these samples behind us have been made from one of four colors, and this is one of those colors. And, and it's just versatile color because it's, it's a good backdrop. Now, you asked about water-based paint. You can do all the water-based paint effects. You could do sponge painting and different effects down first if you'd like, but any water-based paint, let it dry for 24 hours before you start the epoxy process, and then you won't have a reaction. You won't have the water trying to escape and, and creating problems with the epoxy. It doesn't like water. It'll, it'll want to stay gummy, and okay. so uh, that's important. And then with the uh, Rust-Oleum paint that we use, it just works really good with our epoxy. It, it, it doesn't have funny reactions. Some paints do, like Krylon. For some reason, it doesn't work well with our epoxy. So we've stuck with the Rust-Oleum products, and, and they have different ones that work really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what was that about? We use the propane torch for two reasons. One, when we mix our material, and one, one benefit of our material is you can actually mix it with a drill as opposed to a stir stick. Okay. Uh, the reason that's important is because if you sit here and mix it with a stir stick, 
every minute you're mixing is losing working time that you could have on the surface. So this, and it also saves, saves your, your okay. wrist, you know? Sure. Um, and then you're gonna entrain air. You're gonna get bubbles in the epoxy because of the mixing process. Okay. And so after we're done, when we torch it, you'll see it's almost magic. It, it eliminates those bubbles. Also, it's gonna move color. So when we chop color or we move color in this material, it'll look somewhat man-made at first. Okay. But when, when natural stone is formed, it's done with heat and pressure. It's done in that liquid form. So when we move it with the torch, that's where the magic happens. That's okay. where you'll okay. see it move and, and look real. Okay. Yeah, so but that's why we use a, a torch. Concerned about it igniting. Do you have to worry about that? No solvents in the product, so oh, there's no okay. no VOCs, and the only thing that is flammable is when we're using the uh, oil-based paints or when we're using our metallics with alcohol. But as you'll see, it's very little um, spray paint that actually is required, and and as soon as you kind of mix it and meld it, that that goes away. But sometimes you'll see a little flame, and you can blow it out and it's, it's very easy to okay. control. Yeah, the cool. other thing that I noticed was the trowels here, they're notched and I'm wondering why they're spread with the notched trowels in the smooth. That's a very good question and that's actually helping you avoid uh, a problem two ways. Number one, um, we don't like a V-notch, we like a 1 8 square notch so that uh, when we're doing our second coat and when we're doing these color effects because a lot of our um, products are made because we'll do undertones. We'll spray colors underneath so that there's depth, so that when you see through the piece, you see to these different layers of color, um, and this won't scratch it up like a V-notch will. It also leaves the perfect amount of epoxy on the surface so that, A, you're not leaving a bunch of um, epoxy that isn't necessary, so it doesn't cost you more for material, so it gauges everything. And then if you, if you were to use a flat trowel or flat squeegee to spread it, sometimes you'll have high points of epoxy because it's hard to really know. And then that high point will want to level out so it'll take your color effect and spread it thin and kind of what we call wash it out. So we found that the, the notch trowel works really good. We, we, a lot of folks have a hard time finding the 1 inch square notch trowel. And so we actually started making these and they're going to be on our site soon. Okay. But uh, we, got, we got it to where when you're done using it, you set it aside and the, the material will run away from the teeth so you can use it over and over again. And then it's really easy to, to use. It's kind of friendly to hold and stuff. So we'll, we'll, this is the first time we're doing a video with our trowel, so you'll you get know, to it, test it it's out. It's funny because I was looking at it and I was thinking, I've never seen a, a trowel like that. I don't know why, right? <laughs> we're making them, that's why, you know? Like I said, necessity is the mother of invention, right? So yeah, that's why. Oh, and then the other reason we use the uh, square notch trowel is because when we're, when we're mixing, mixing is like the main event. If you don't get your one-to-one -one ratio right, so you wanna use a mixing bucket when we're mixing, which we'll show how to do that. If you don't do that right, you're setting yourself up for error. So you wanna get a one-to-one -one ratio, and then you wanna get it mixed right. A lot of times um, when you're drilling this, you won't go all the way to the bottom, or you won't touch the sides of the bucket. And we wanna use every last drop of epoxy. We don't wanna waste our, our money. And so what we'll do is we'll take a stir stick, we'll scrape all that epoxy on the surface. Now, when we trowel it out, this helps to mix it again. And then finally, after we've done uh, troweled it out, we chop it with the brush, that also mixes it. So you're basically mixing it three times. You're doing it inside the bucket, with the trowel, and then with the brush. How, how do I clean the tools off if I'm using epoxy? Do I just, am I just throwing the brush away? Good question. You can actually, we have a, 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 a tub of acetone, which is basically fingernail polish remover, okay. Okay. and that will clean your brushes. We don't like to use a used brush in our final coat because we do two coats. We'll do a color coat, and a clear coat, but we don't like to have chunks of, of epoxy left and do a final coat because you want that to lay out like glass. The okay. first coat, so we, we'll, we'll reuse brushes over and over for the first coat, um, but the second one, we, we use a new brush. And okay. you, you want to get a brush that isn't going to shed. We, we like to use these little, little uh, flexible end brushes because they don't shed. We've just tested them out and we, we love them. So okay. this, this is what we use and then, um, it helps to mix the epoxy. And also, when you use the trowel, you'll notice trowel lines in the epoxy a little bit that if you don't randomly chop out, it could show as a man-made product. So that's another reason we chop it. Okay. And, and you, you see our tools are pretty rudimentary. There's nothing high-end about our tools, and that's by design. We don't want you to have to have big, expensive tools to make these countertops. Uh, and I think that's really important. But let me just ask you this, as far as the uh, 
trial is concerned. I can go to, do you have a website? I can go to your website and I can order this? Yeah, we're actually just about to put it on our site. Uh, you can get these at Home Depot as well for, you know, four or five dollars. We're going to have them on, on our site for five bucks, but we have a lot of people that go to their Home Depot, they can't find it because they, they're not a popular trowel. So this will be right on our site at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Okay. Yeah. Right, what I'll do is I'll place a link in the description below the video to Stone Coat Countertops so you can find their products and check them out for yourself. And I gotta say too, I love your videos, Leah, and, and we're gonna put a link in our, uh, below our description as well so that you guys could find all these amazing tutorials that you do. I've learned so much. I've learned about templating. I love how you will cut holes in your template so it'll stay put. I've always overlapped my tape. I'm going, why didn't I think of that? I just love your, your, your videos. Okay, well, I guess the next step is for us to do this thing. All right, let's get started. So, let's get started, Mike. Awesome. Well, we're going to do, we're going to mix our epoxy first, and again, we're going to do a one-to-one -one ratio. I like to use part B first, and the reason we use part B is it's a thinner viscosity, and so the part A wants to sink down into it anyway, so we like to mix it this way. Another thing that we've done is we've put our epoxy near our heat source. That way it's nice and warm and it's easier to mix. And when it sits out in a cold garage, you want to make sure you warm it up before you do this process and everything will go a little bit easier for you. Do I have to worry about cure time if I'm in a cold environment? What's ideally the temperature I want to be working with your product yeah. Great question. That's very important. You want to be minimum 60 degrees, okay. but we ideally you're 70. Um, in a garage, if it's not insulated, you really need to heat it up and get it nice and warm in there and leave it warm while the material is curing. So in the winter time, you got to be in a warm environment. In the summer when it's really hot, as long as you're not in direct sunlight, no problem. It can be really hot and you still retain that working time, but you don't want to do this when it's below 60 degrees because it, yes, it will still cure, but it won't come to its full potential of hardness. Okay. And so that's, that's important. All right. So what we're going to do, uh, all of our bottles just have a little plunge protector in there. So we're going to get that out and we're going to do, we'll start with two quarts. And so I'm going to mix this up right here. We'll just do a one to one ratio. Okay, let's do our second part. This is our part A, this is the resin, and the first part was the hardener. Another thing is, uh, if people want it to dry faster, sometimes they think, put more hardener in, it'll go better. No, don't do that. Keep it a one-to-one -one ratio, because putting more hardener in will be adverse. It will actually uh, never harden, and so just be careful about that. You want to you keep it all a one-to-one -one ratio. And right there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drill, and when we mix this, you wanna start out a little bit slow, because if I stick it in here and hit it full speed, it's gonna wanna grab that and kinda whip it around. So hold the bucket, stick in your drill, and kinda start slow. Okay, I feel good, now I can pull that full speed, and that's how I like to get started. And you'll see that the two parts will start to mix. You can see how they're still separated, but as it mixes, it'll also start to clear up again. And so we usually mix for about two minutes and I'll, I'll, I'll keep the drill right here in the center for a minute and then we'll start to slow it down and I'll put my drill right here at the bottom. We'll start to just get everything on the bottom and then I'll work my way up the sides of the bucket so that I scrape everything off the sides and the bottom and then I pull my drill you see how the, part, the two parts are still trying to mix? It's really easy kind of to see. Uh, I'll pull it off the bottom and I'll hit it full speed again. You really want to agitate this material, get it mixed up well, and uh, that's, that's key when you're doing this. All right, would you like to mix it a little bit? I think I will. All right. See how it starts to clear up when the two parts mix again too. That's, that's how you can tell it's mixing well. Now sometimes if the product is cold, it will actually appear a little bit more milky when you're doing this and don't let that alarm you when you get it out and start to spread it, everything will clear up as well and that's normal. All right, that's good, Leah. 
So uh, what I do when I'm, when I'm done drilling is I'll take this and I'll just set it right here so it continues to drip in the bucket. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add our white base color tint. We're going to tint this entire batch of epoxy white. Uh, for this particular recipe, that's what it calls for. So we're going to do that. A lot of our recipes, you're just going to keep them clear and do different things into them. But today, we're going to do white. And then what's nice about tinting your epoxy is then everything that we do, it melds with that colored epoxy and starts to look very natural like marble. So when you're going for marble effects, this is what you do is you tint your epoxy whatever color. You could do black marble or white marble or basically any color of the rainbow. Okay, now you talked about a recipe. Yeah. Okay. So do you have recipe cards? <laughs> you know what we have? <laughs> On our site, we have over 30 recipes that, like all these have a recipe behind us. And then okay. we are constantly playing with this material and creating new looks. And so we update that and, okay. and, and we show. Uh, and then a lot of our customers do really neat projects and they post recipes. And so on our Facebook and on our website, you'll get new content all the time that shows how we do different looks. Okay. Yeah. Folks, keep in mind that you can go to their Facebook page or you can go to the website and really take a look at some of these different designs and totally blow you away. Thank you. Uh, when you're doing the base color tint, rule of thumb is you can do up to about two ounces per quart. So we got two quarts here and we're going to do, you know, I eyeball this because I've done it so much and it's not a super critical measurement like the one to one ratio is. You just don't want to do too much base color tint and, 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 and uh, really overdo it. So about okay. two ounces per quart is okay. what, and there's eight ounces in one of these. So that gives us a good idea. I'm going to take that and I'm just going to add a little bit right there and then we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and mix this up okay it's important to remember when you're mixing the stone coat countertop epoxy you don't want to leave the product in the bucket for a long period of time so if we're doing a big piece you don't want to leave a bunch of it in the bucket because the mass of epoxy will generate a uh, faster working time so you want to get it out on the piece as soon as you can but don't be in too big of a rush but that's important not to leave it in the bucket so we've added our base color tint. How much do we know that we need on a piece this size? We use three ounces per square foot per coat. So a two gallon kit of our product will do a full 40 square foot kitchen with two coats. This color coat, and then we always do a clear coat over the top. And that does two things. When we, when we do our color coat and we're doing reactions and we're spraying things into it and we're getting little imperfections that we want to cover up, that clear coat does that for us. And so that's important to remember, do two coats. So let's go ahead and mix this base color tint in the epoxy. Actually, I'll have you do that, Leah, and you'll see how it'll mix and it'll turn everything white. Perfect. You're getting it all mixed. That's great. Sides don't look like they want, it's not incorporated. Yeah, so I slow down the drill and come up there and just kind of grab those sides. There you go. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of tint to get the entire thing opaque where you can't see through it. Is that, tell me when, Mike. You're almost there. All right, let's call that good. Perfect, good job. And I'll just take it, and I don't like to spin it too fast because we'll get it on ourselves. I'll just take the drill and kind of help it get off my, my drill head. Now, we actually don't clean these off. You'll, uh, you'll see in a lot of our videos we'll have drips and bumps sticking off this. We just call that character, and it helps it mix even better, right? So it's okay. All right, we'll set this aside. Okay, now the fun part begins. We're going to spread the epoxy out. And what I like to do is when I spread it out, I like to keep a big bead right in the center of the piece. And then we trowel it out. We don't want to get a big massive mount right near the edge and then not have time to come here with our trowel while it starts to go over and start losing product over the edge.
What do you think so far? Lee? I, <laughs> I love it, man. I am so glad we came down here. Uh, that's this cool. It's fantastic. I'm sure you hear this all the so, time, right? Gonna, <laughs> we, you don't get tired of it. No, I mean, we, I, I love it when people see it in real life because you can't, you can't see, you can't see the real, like, oh my gosh, it's really that easy unless you're here to see it, you know? It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's easy and it looks fantastic. Yeah, I mean, people can really get those results.